the next episode of The Doc is In. My name is Derek Keddington. I'm a program manager in the, uh, the Cancer Institute, the Fatima B. Mubarak Center at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Today, I have the pleasure of having Dr. Fawad Khan, our medical director of longevity medicine in the Cancer Institute, as well as our uh, lead physician in the hereditary high-risk program. And for the first time, at least with our cancer podcasts, um, we have, or have the privilege of having a patient with us. So uh, Yvonne Caldwell is here with us today, who's been one of our patients in our hereditary high-risk clinic. So we're very excited to have you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. So for today's podcast, we're going to talk about cancer screening um, and the importance that, that can play in each of our lives. Um, so first, starting with Dr. Khan, can you tell us what, what is cancer screening and why is it important? Well, uh, thank you, Derek, for having me here. Uh, cancer screening is clearly one of the most significant developments in modern medicine. Cancer screening for uh, some of the most common cancers, not only it prevents cancers, but also helps with detecting early cancers. Uh, evidence has shown that uh, with cancer screening, uh, we not only are able to offer better cancer treatments, but it also reduces mortality with these cancers. Thank you. It's amazing how important the early detection can be and how big of an impact it can play down the line um, in a patient's care. So you mentioned that not all cancers are screenable. Um, what cancers can you be screened for? Well, fortunately, we have screening for some of the most common cancers. Um, for breast cancer, we recommend screening mammograms from age 40. For cervical cancer, we recommend starting pap smears from age 21. For colorectal cancers, we recommend screening colonoscopy from, for, uh, from age 45 for both males and females. For lung cancer screening, we recommend low-dose CD scan. For smokers, and as well as uh, ex-smokers, we recommend to see their physician to see if they meet the criteria. And for prostate cancer, uh, we recommend starting a blood test for PSA from age 50. Great, thank you. Now, and that's for like the general population, right? Right. What about for patients that um, maybe have a stronger family history of, of cancer? Uh, Do the guidelines change at all for that? Absolutely. And thanks for pointing that out, Derek. Uh, for patients or population who have increased, who might be at increased risk, either due to family history or they carry a cancer gene, or in the past they've had some precancerous cells, um, they would uh, need a, a, a detailed risk assessment in uh, our high-risk clinic or a high-risk clinic elsewhere. Um, and based on a detailed risk assessment, uh, if they're found to be at increased risk, they will be recommended uh, precision prevention programs. Great, that's awesome. And that's the program that Yvonne has been a part of for the last several months at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Um, so Yvonne, can you tell us what made you or prompted you to, to go to the high-risk clinic to begin with? Well, I think the first prompt was that my mother and my grandmother had both died from cancer-related issues. So I was already kind of aware that, that I had a risk in place. And I wanted to be proactive in my approach to my health. And there's been a lot of awareness about um, the genetic testing. So I thought that was a great place to start. And Dr. Fouad had helped me in that direction when I had gone there and seen my OBGYN. And I was led to him. That's awesome. So you came to the clinic, met with Dr. Khan. Dr. Khan, how did you determine um, that Yvonne was at an increased risk for developing cancer? Well, I think uh, Yvonne had made the first most important step to come to the high-risk clinic. Uh, we went into the details of her personal history, went through the three-generational family history, and with the help of that, we were able to put her in the right risk category. Uh, we use estimated, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, accredited risk estimation models. Um, and it clearly showed that she was at increased risk. However, there was one missing information, and that was the genetic information, the germline genetic information. Uh, so we, uh, I recommended Juan to go yes. for a genetic test so we could have a more comprehensive risk assessment and then place her accordingly on the uh, precision prevention programs. Awesome. 
So, you know, on this must have been, I mean, you had some idea that you may be at increased risk because of your family history, but, um, you know, what was your initial reaction that after you met with Dr. Khan and he said, you're at increased risk, especially mm-hmm. in your family history, and I think you should get genetic testing? I don't think it, it was not that when he said it, I don't think I was as surprised maybe as somebody who did not have um, a previous history. As I mentioned before, uh, my mother and my grandmother had both um, passed away from uh, cancers. So I was kind of, um, I had it in my mind. But of course, when anybody hears this and thinks about this, you know, there's there's always some a little bit of uh, trepidation, uh, a little bit of curiosity, I would say. Um, uh, that was my initial feeling. Um, and it was also wanting to really know, to be proactive about what's what's going to happen to me. I don't want to follow the same path as my mother did, which was too late to help her. So doing this was more of kind of a proactive step with my health and helping me to better understand what my risk profile was and how I could be more active in keeping those type of diseases away from me. Yeah, and we, we know that you had the genetic testing. It came back with results saying you had some mutations that may increase your risk for certain types of cancers. Um, that information can be confusing if you're just looking right. at a, a test results. So how did having the conversations with Dr. Khan and other providers help you understand what that really meant from you from a risk standpoint? Yeah, I really didn't understand um, uh, the outcomes, and, and uh, Dr. Fouad was able to go through um, the, the figures with me and break down what those uh, percent, what those meant, and kind of explain to me what type of options I would have, um, what type of proactive treatments I could take on, and and what that meant in terms of the figures. When you see the figures that come out of that, if someone tells you you have a 70 or 80 percent chance of uh, elevated chance uh, or risk of a cancer, it, it almost makes you stand a little bit more aware. <laughs> you, you, you think, oh my gosh, I, I need to do something about this. So he was there to not only provide those figures, but also to provide um, kind of a plan for me, um, what type of options I would be able to take and um, led me to the right physicians that could help me on that journey. Great. And Dr. Khan, that leads to our next question of, when you do have a patient come back, and specifically Yvonne, with genetic testing results that increase your risk for cancer, you know, what, how did that change your approach to her care? Well, um, one of the reassuring parts now is that for each gene mutation that we get, there is a clear precision prevention program. And in this particular type of mutation, which is called BRCA2 or BRCA2 mutation, um, there are two very high risks. Uh, one is the breast cancer, the other one is the ovarian cancer. And then there are two smaller risks, uh, which are for pancreas cancer as well as the skin melanomas. Um, so our focus was straight away to put a uh, prevention program for breast as well as ovarian cancers. And these range from enhanced screening for early detection to certain lifestyle changes to reduce the risk. And then we also have options of preventive medication and preventive surgery. Um, and so we were able to discuss those in, in great detail and, and, and clearly straight away place her on, on those programs. Um, and uh, so we involved uh, a, a bigger, wider team of experts uh, which would be genetic counselors, um, our uh, specialists uh, in, in gynecology, so Dr. Stephanie Ritchie, uh, who's an expert in um, managing uh, patients who've had gene mutations and, and offer them preventive surgery. And then we, of course, have our wider team of breast surgeons, uh, our lifestyle team, our, our uh, exercise coach, um, our uh, psychotherapists, um, and we also have our nutritionists. So the entire team working together to offer uh, the, the prevention program to Yvonne. Thank you, Dr. Khan. Um, so Yvonne, you know, what, having gone through this over the last several months, what advice would you give to someone that has a strong family history of cancer? I think, I believe that um, 
there is a fear that people have. Um, sometimes they're afraid to know. And that fear um, is actually not, not founded. By doing that genetic testing, you could potentially save your own life um, by understanding what the potentiality is for um, certain diseases, cancer-related or not. Um, it helps you to plan and to come up with your own specialized journey for how you deal with the future and your, the future of your own health. No, and I think when we, when patients or even myself think about, you know, cancer screening, you know, there's some nervousness or concern or genetic mm -hmm. testing, like what is that? Right. And I think it's important for all of us to understand that they're, generally speaking, they're simple things. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a mammogram. It's, you know, colonoscopy is a little more invasive than other options, but the potential to save your life over a little bit of discomfort, I think is a huge benefit for some of these screening tests. Right. And I've done all of those screening tests. And to be honest, uh, from the colonoscopy all the way to the genetic testing, I, genetic testing is as simple as giving a small amount of blood. Uh, the colonoscopy is painless. It, it, there was no pain involved at all. Um, and the mam mammogram, I think most women are familiar with, it's slightly discomforting, but it's not painful at all. And it's much better than not doing it at all. One of the commonest questions we hear from women uh, on screening mammograms is, well, if I don't have any symptoms, then why do I need to do a uh, mammogram? Because it exposes... Uh, me to radiation and that can increase my risk of getting cancer and it, it is a myth and our answer to to that question would be screening mammograms are completely safe they expose to minimal radiation and long-term studies have shown that they are safe uh, and they do save lives thank you um so to you know you've been on this journey the past several months yvonne um how is you know this experience changes kind of your outlook on on health and preventative care uh wow so much so much um it has made me an advocate i think for um proactive health care and taking control of one's life in terms of 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 how the outcomes could be i i, I really wanted to find a way to avoid um ending of the same situation as both my mother and my grandmother. And at the same time, it also helped me um, to share that information with my family, my journey, and to alleviate some of their, their hesitation. Um, all of my family now has, uh, some of them have completed it, and some of them are undergoing that testing as well. And I've shared it also with my children, so that they would be aware of their genetic background and at least be tested. It's as simple as a blood test. I, uh, this is how I explained it to them. And so they are all going to do the genetic testing as well too. And as well, even for men to do that same genetic testing because there is a potentiality that men can be exposed to that same BRCA gene. It's not exclusive to women. Thank you. It's been awesome having you here with us today. I think it's been uh, an enriching experience for myself, but I think for everyone watching as well, um, we really appreciate your time coming with us today. Dr. Khan, is there anything else you want to end with on, on cancer screening and before we finish? Well, I would say that uh, anyone with family history of cancer uh, or if there are any cancer genes in the family, I would highly recommend attending a high-risk clinic um, and, and getting a risk assessment done. We are very fortunate here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi to have a comprehensive hereditary high-risk program probably the first one in the, in the UAE, where we are able to offer this service. And we are also very fortunate to have the entire high-risk team, a multi-specialty team, where we work, work all together to, uh, to give the uh, holistic preventive care to our patients. So please don't hesitate to, to uh, reach out to your family physician or to our team to book an appointment. 
thank you for spending time with us today. And, and please remember to take your health seriously and get screened um, for breast cancer, cervical cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, as well as you have a conversations with um, your primary care physicians uh, on your overall health. But join us next time for the next episode of The Doc is In.